welcome to Bharata First. You're watching Big Picture with me, Frank Rausen Pereira. Since you're here, I would like to thank you for your continued support. For those of you who haven't already subscribed, please like the video, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and then all notifications. Do subscribe to our newsletter as well to get some incisive content. The Bharata First team runs a Big Picture quiz. Please participate by going through the description in Big Picture videos. If you like our content, do contribute to keep it alive. The links are in the description of this video. Uh, let me also take this opportunity to inform you about Bharata First Knowledge Center, an initiative that will help each one of you in your competitive exams and just transform the way you learn. Go to kc.bharatafirst.com for more details and register now. Experience a whole new way of gaining knowledge and learning. All this information along with some must-see recommendations are in the description of the video. Please go through it. And now on to the discussion. India on Sunday assumed the presidency of the United Nations Security Council for the month of August and is set to organize key events in three major areas of maritime security, peacekeeping and counter-terrorism. As part of its new role, India will decide the UN body's agenda for the month and coordinate important meetings on a range of issues. Security Council will also have on its agenda several important meetings, including Syria, Iraq, Somalia, Yemen, and the Middle East. Security Council will also be adopting important resolutions on Somalia, Mali, and the UN interim force in Lebanon. Apart from a meeting on maritime security, peacekeeping, and counterterrorism, India will also be organizing a solemn event in memory of peacekeepers. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be the first Indian Prime Minister to preside over a meeting of the UNSC. In this edition of Big Picture, we will analyze India's UNSC presidency. Joining me on the program today are Manjeev Singh Puri, former ambassador, KP Nair, strategic analyst, and Amalindu Mishra, Department of Politics, Lancaster University, UK. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of Big Picture. Ms. Nair, let me start the program with you first. Let's first try and understand then analyze you know uh, what is this presidency all about how does it happen how has india really become the president now of the unsc you're asking me yes mr nair oh, oh oh yeah 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 well um i i ask you if you are asking me because uh, we have a great veteran of the un security council here ambassador manjeev singh puri my dear friend who uh, uh, was was uh, uh, at the UN in, in our permanent mission to the UN when India was last in the Security Council 2011-2012 and uh, I was I was covering the UN out of New York at that time and uh, I recall uh, his great contribution on issues like Libya Syria and all that in which uh, we played uh, we played a great a great role uh, i mean even as a elected member not a permanent member even as not a president but uh, now that we have assumed the presidency we have uh, a special status and uh, what i understand is that during this month ambassador tirumurthy our uh, permanent representative who uh, is now the president of the council from uh, yesterday has already unfurled a full program for the month during the Indian presidency. I understand that the main themes of our presidency will be uh, uh, peacekeeping, uh, counterterrorism, and uh, maritime uh, security. There will be uh, high level meetings on all three issues in the Security Council under the Indian presidency. I expect that uh, there will be at least one occasion uh, during these thematic meetings when, when all the uh, uh, foreign ministers of the 15 uh, member states will uh, attend, which will be uh, not only uh, a recognition of the importance of those themes, it will also be a tribute to India's contribution uh, to the United Nations over the last uh, 75 years as a founding member. 
because if the if even if uh, 10 of the 15 foreign ministers attend one of our thematic meetings it will mean that uh, what india is doing during its press presidency is being uh, being recognized uh, worldwide and uh, I understand that uh, during the presidency, another issue, another point that we are uh, planning to stress is by having a solemn ceremony uh, in memory of uh, UN peacekeepers, the blue helmets, who have laid down their lives in uh, upholding uh, the cause of the UN and thereby of the world. India, um, as you know, uh, is, a, is a major, one of the biggest troop contributing uh, countries uh, to uh, UN, UN peacekeeping. So in a nutshell, uh, this is what the Indian uh, presidency uh, signifies as we enter the second day of uh, the month long rotating presidency. Absolutely. All right. Uh, so let me come across to you now, uh, uh, Ambassador, and Let's talk about this aspect as well, you know. So as far as what Mr. Nair said, let's take that particular aspect forward. What does this mean for India? Secondly, how does this come about? Because uh, like Mr. Nair has very rightly pointed out, you're the go-to man when it comes to the UN as far as uh, uh, ambassadors are concerned. So who else to have on this prog program other than you? So let's hear it from you. Uh, thank you, Frank. And thank you, my dear friend. Mr. Nair. Uh, Frank, the UN Security Council has 15 members and the presidency of the council rotates in the English alphabet from country to country every year, every month. So we uh, were with I, so we've got in at our own time, uh, countries which would have become a little earlier took on at a certain particular point of time. When we were there in 2011-2012, we had the good fortune of serving as the presidency twice. But it so happened that those others who got in along with us, their, uh, the names of their country started after I. Well, you know, that's the luck of the draw. But as they say, the luck also, you know, sometimes favors those who are willing to, you know, make the contribution. The world also looks at it, etc. Now, uh, serving on the Security Council at this time was a very important element. COVID is one side of it. But basically the huge rise of China. Uh, that is something which is particularly important. But in my particular view, one of the important elements to be in the Security Council this time is also, you know, the changing scenario in Afghanistan. And whichever way we look at it, you know, peace and tranquility in Afghanistan is something of great importance to us. Uh, India also chairs the Taliban Sanctions Committee, which is an old offshoot of something that started actually even one year before 9-11, when the Taliban had come in place. And, you know, this time rotationally, it's come back to us. So we have a certain locus. Now, when you chair the Security Council, you have the opportunity of doing a little bit of agenda. A lot of the agenda is obviously set as a result of the routine reports are coming in of peacekeeping operations, of issues which affect international peace and security, and you have no choice but to address them as per the, secu uh, the Secretariat and its demands. There are also events which unfold and you have no choice but. But otherwise, on thematic issues, you can undertake a certain amount of setting the agenda, and other members are normally willing to accommodate. I think India has chosen two or three very important subjects from its perspective. One is peacekeeping. As Mr. Nair very rightly pointed out, India is in history the largest contributor to UN peacekeeping. So we are looking at something to do with peacekeeping and technology, protection of the protectors, and so on. That will be a very well-attended event and something which is very good. Then we are looking at something of like on maritime security. You will understand. And for a country like India, maritime security has a number of sets of issues. It's not only related to our economics, it is related to this entire business of Chinese hegemony in our area, the South, South China Sea, and so many of these factors. I think this is an extremely important event where India has an old locus, we've done a lot on it, and we have something to be there. I believe the Honorable Prime Minister might just be chairing that particular event 
in a few days from now. And that will all happen virtually. Now, you know, I am an old fashioned guy who really believes that you must come together and sit next to each other. But you know, technology and this virtual meetings have their own advantage. Otherwise, honorable prime ministers are unlikely to be there just because you happen to be chairing the Security Council, unless you are very fortunate and you get your turn to chair the Security Council in the month of September, when anyway, 100 odd heads of state and government descend on the United Nations. So I think this is a very important time for us, a time for us to highlight our concerns, our interests in the matter. And when you sit in the steering seat of the Security Council, you also have the ability to be able to highlight to this world and push the agenda a little bit. It's important, and I'm very glad that we are working on it, and we are seeing from our side both the Honorable Prime Minister and the Minister of External Affairs, who in fact will be going to New York, themselves sitting there and steering this matter. This will also, in some senses, and I hope, add to the weight that India brings to multilateralism and hopefully to India's own quest towards a permanent seat. That, of course, is a different process. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Dr. Mishra, let me come across to you now. You know, so how would you look at this aspect and what does uh, the Indian presidency or the UNSC really mean? What is it that you look forward to? In the first place, uh, India is a big power. It has big power ambitions. So the need of the hour is India to project and uh, promote that particular big power ambition. As both our other guests have highlighted already, uh, India is sort of setting the agenda according to that particular perspective. But there is something else that I would like to bring in here, and that has to do with why India has chosen those three specific agendas to be discussed during its presidency in the month of August 2021. First of all, India doesn't want to sort of uh, break its rank with all the Security Council members, especially the dominant ones. So themes that it has chosen is dear to each one of the member states. It is not controversial. When you talk about maritime security, it affects China as much as it affects India. It affects France as much as it affects India. It affects the United States as much as it affects India as well as Britain and India as well. So there is a convergence of concern from the permanent five, if you put it that way. So there is no room for kind of uh, complaints whatsoever coming from that particular uh, area. So that is the reason why India has embraced that particular idea. So since it concerns all the permanent five members, it goes down very well and India can show its leadership skills. So rhetoric is one thing, but then we also have to talk about whether India is walking the talk. And this is where we realize that India has got a fair on its cap. Its role in terms of providing maritime security, especially in the Horn of Africa, in the greater Indian Ocean regions has been significant and it has been recognized by big powers as well. So by embracing this particular issue, it is going to make sure that its leadership qualities and its intentions are recognized by all. That's number one. Number two, when you talk about counterterrorism. So India could have chosen human rights. India could have chosen the persecution of minorities and so on and so forth. Or India could have talked about something else which affects, let's say, China and all this, but it didn't so. It chose a topic on counterterrorism because this is a common concern among, again, the permanent five. And it hopes that by pushing forward this particular agenda, it is not only going to isolate those particular international society members, such as our neighboring states, who have been undermining India's security, but also at the same time, it can carry the agenda forward by getting the response that it expects from, again, those permanent five here. So that's the second one. And the third one has to do with Indian peacekeeping mission, which has already been spoken by my other two colleagues, but I want to say something more here. And that is that this peacekeeping aspect is not so cased as much as India would have liked in the past. India, as has been already suggested, one of the key contributors to peacekeeping. In fact, at the moment, there are 5,500 Indian peacekeeping forces employed from Cyprus to Lebanon to Middle East and Somalia and elsewhere. 
And in this particular year, in fact, there were 130 Indian peacekeeping personnel who were awarded uh, sort of uh, recognition and merits by the United Nations uh, General Assembly for their contribution and role. And India also is one of the first countries which has sent a female contingent, so peacekeeping is concerned. So India is talking about walking the talk in terms of projecting its role as a net contributor to international peace and stability and security. And there couldn't have been a better occasion to talk about those three issues that it has chosen as a part of, as in setting or as a part of a kind of community of international uh, actors coming together and taking it forward. I think it is a great opportunity and we have to see how India uh, sort of plays it and how it is being perceived by all the permanent five and of the 15 member states here. Absolutely. So, uh, Ms. Nair, uh, coming back to you now, you know, I'm going to take the points that Dr. Mishra raised with you, Ambassador, a little later on in the program about the themes itself. But, Mr. Nair, um, how much can be achieved? You know, we're talking about agenda setting as well in a span of 30 days. Can we set the agenda? Can we set the tone? How successful can we be in 30 days? I assume that uh, it all depends on how much preparations have gone into it, you know. I mean, uh, if a country, I don't want to name a country, uh, for obviously for reasons of political correctness, if a country were, comes into the Security Council presidency on day one of its uh, membership uh, without any preparation and tries to learn on the job, then of course it will not work. But India has been from, from that day it assumed, on January 1st, membership of the Security Council, uh, the entire resources of the Ministry of External Affairs, permanent mission of India, Indian diplomats uh, all over the world has been harnessed into uh, uh, preparations for this day, this month, when India will assume the presidency. And of course, uh, preparations for the entire two-year uh, tenure of India. Uh, it struck me that uh, India has had Security Council focused consultations, individual consultations with uh, most, almost all of the 15 members. You know? I mean, uh, External Affairs Minister Jai Shankar went to Kenya Kenya is a country where Indian foreign minister has not gone in a long time. But Jaishankar went there in spite at the height of the second wave in India of COVID-19 because Kenya is a member of the Security Council. And these consultations were focused on uh, Security Council. Similarly, another secretary, Jai, uh, uh, Rahul Chabra, who is another secretary in the Ministry of External Affairs, he went to Ghana specifically for this. Um, but uh, most, most interesting for me, the most impressive evidence of Indian maturity to enable uh, it to assume with responsibility the presidency was India's consultations with China. Actually, the first Security Council focused consultations that India had in February was with China, you know, and remember, that was the time when our dispute with uh, China in Ladakh on Galwan was at its height. I was very impressed by our diplomatic maturity in insulating multilateral issues from bilateral issues. Okay, we are having uh, problems in Ladakh, we will deal with it. But when it comes to world affairs, when it comes to multilateral affairs, when it comes to the UN, we set it apart, these disputes, and we talk to you on the UN. And uh, there were extensive discussions with China, as a result of which, during the Indian presidency, I can assure you, China will support us in the Security Council. China will not create any hindrance for the Indian presidency. Of course, not on bilateral issues or on uh, advancing Indian national interests, but in advancing the cause of the world, which is what UN is about. You know? 
So a lot because a lot of preparations have gone into the presidency, I think we will be able to uh, score significantly during these uh, 30 days. But I mean, achieve is a relative thing, uh, concept. Uh, I understand that during the Indian presidency, there'll be resolutions on Yemen, Mali, Somalia. There will be a, a lot of focus on UNIFIL, the United Nations Interim Force in Lebanon, where we have a large uh, troop presence there. So uh, on all these issues, if we are able to get something done in the Security Council during the 30 days, I would call it, I would certainly call it an achievement. Absolutely. All right, uh, Ambassador, coming, coming to you now, you know, talking about the theme and uh, expanding upon those three themes that, uh, uh, that Amalindo Mishra spoke about, you know, uh, counterterrorism, uh, uh, maritime security and peacekeeping. So is, are these well thought out themes, you know, themes that are non-controversial and themes where we can see some forward movement so well thought out at the end of the day? Frank, uh, you know, Professor Mishra, as well as uh, Mr. Nair, have put this quite well. Uh, to simply stir the pot, because you have the presidency of the UN Security Council, you will have much of a success. But to be able to highlight areas in which you have an intrinsic interest and working with others, let me tell you, you make a point. So let me say something on the issue of maritime security. There is no doubt that this is a matter of interest to everybody in the world. But at the moment, let us also understand that a lot of the focus is on and the use of this maritime security is in the context of South China Sea. However, it does allow the Chinese too to be able to make their efforts. And you know that they've done their own efforts in terms of anti-piracy, etc. So there are these particular issues. So points get made, they get made sophisticatedly, and they get made as a result of preparation. And I would agree with uh, Mr. Nair that, you know, consultations have been held with everyone to take these things forward. Yet, of course, you want to make your points, you want to make the perspectives that you want to make. Let's take the case of peacekeeping. Look, uh, for a large number of countries in the world, especially in the West, etc., the idea of peacekeeping is that they look at it like this, that, you know, they've been paying for it and you have taken the entire set of the glory for whatever it's worth that has taken place. So there have been a lot of things that have happened over the last several years. The whole ideas of peace building, now the whole ideas of sustaining peace, there are many issues. But for us, this remains an absolutely vital issue. And remember, in the most cutting edge of things in Africa and elsewhere, we mentioned the case of Lebanon. These are extremely important, and that's where Indian soldiers have laid their lives down. So we need to be in the forefront. And it has been one of the areas in which, in its own limited way, in terms of keeping up international peace and security, the United Nations has been somewhat successful. And so, therefore, to highlight it is certainly in our interest, but also in the interest of multilateralism and the United Nations. Now we come to counter terrorism. Look, it's a, it's a complex issue. Almost everyone agrees that terrorism needs to be countered. And yet, let's understand that a relatively straightforward thing like the Comprehensive Convention on International Terrorism has not been able to go forward. There are a number of reasons. Because international governance is also a question of games that countries play. And that's something that we also realize and understand. But India is a country which has been a victim of terrorism well before anyone else. And there is reasonable reasons to imagine that things in India certainly could become problematic again. Therefore, to keep the global focus on counterterrorism is something of extreme importance as far as we are concerned. I mentioned to you the situation in Afghanistan. What could happen? I don't know what could happen on that. But some of the fallouts in the past have been extremely problematic to us in the area of terrorism. And so, therefore, these themes that have been chosen are themes on which we can work with the rest of the world, but they are themes which are important to us and important to us to be able to make some points which are of relevance to us and from our perspective. 
And so therefore, there is a great deal of preparation that has gone into it. And this is a factor that had been known for years in advance that you know we would be there. We wouldn't have known that we would have got the presidency in the month of August. But whichever month, whether it was July or September, September would have been a different cup of tea altogether with its UN session, in-person session, hopefully, I don't know about COVID or heads of state itself coming. But otherwise, preparation had to go in and preparation is an essential component for making a success. And that success, of course, is a measured success. But you want to make that measured success. Absolutely. You know, and thanks to the roll of the dice, we will get uh, the presidency once again before our term ends this time around. So, um, Amlet Mishra, coming to you now, uh, what is it that we would like to focus on or what is it that India should focus on? Of course, now we have the themes for this time around, but going forward, how do we I ensure that the UNSC is far more constructive and what else can we focus on? The key focus that India should, or New Delhi should pursue, is building bridges. Because if India has got big power ambitions, if it wants to have a permanent seat in the Security Council in the foreseeable future, a lot depends on how it conducts itself. And if it makes a success of its current presidency, which is for this month, and again, which is coming to India uh, at the end of uh, 2022, December 2022, to be precise. So it can either sort of set the agenda now, follow it through, and make a much more big bang approach in December. But then again, what I would suggest here is that India should also not get carried away by thinking that this is something that it can uh, pursue, and uh, this is something where it is going to make everything uh, evident and visible, and there is nothing in future. So as, as other speakers have already highlighted, that agenda setting that has gone in terms of preparation, it also needs to look at it in terms of what future topics and issues it should pursue in terms of global peace, security, stability, and establishment of a truly multilateral forum. As it is, United Nations is a divided house. United States doesn't give much importance to it. There are issues uh, to do with finances. And uh, there are also many uh, festering conflicts, protracted conflicts, in fact, which defy any kind of resolution. So what India needs to think about is whether it can be that particular actor which can push that positive energy which can provide the non-Western Southern uh, context so that many of these sticking issues which have plagued United Nations ever since its establishment 75 years ago can be addressed in a fruitful manner, in a successful manner. So therefore, what I would suggest is that India should have that perspective as to how it is to conduct itself. how it needs to set that particular. So these three agendas are fine, but this particular expertise, this intelligence, this bridge building can be developed to that fruitful uh, kind of uh, reason in the future and uh, the years to come. Right, absolutely. Okay, time to get uh, closing, quick closing comments now from all my panelists with the best way forward, starting first with you, Mr. Nair. Well, um... Ambassador Manjeev Puri uh, referred in his last intervention to uh, the September presidency. I would like to conclude by saying that uh, I am very happy that uh, we did not get the presidency uh, in September, not only for reasons that uh, Ambassador Puri said, uh, but because September would have been a challenge and it would probably Indian presidency would have been a failure. I, uh, because uh, September Afghanistan will come up. Americans are withdrawing from uh, Afghanistan. And Afghanistan, uh, in my assessment, is going to be a mess. And it would go to the Security Council and Security Council would not be able to do anything on Afghanistan. Uh, it will get handicapped. 
and then uh, all the opprobrium will come on the presidency you know ineffective security council ineffective presidency so i feel very sad for ireland which is going to be the president in uh, september when they are really going to uh, have a, a, a tough time so uh, india has luck on its side i would say in being the president in uh, august and i am sure i am sure with uh, the experience multilateral experience of our permanent representative in uh, uh, new york the president of the council ambassador tirumurthy i am sure that uh, we will do well in our presidency ambassador thank you frank you know i like mr nair's approach of you know dodge the bullet <laughs> look a september presidency gives you and i'm not talking about covid times because we don't know what will happen this time whether the entire general assembly itself will be you know offline and online and so on and so forth but otherwise gives you a tremendous opportunity for your leader to sit at the high table and you know that session doesn't necessarily have to be what will happen in uh, in uh, afghanistan uh, mr nair i'm not sure that everything will happen only in the month of september i think it's a very very big and a serious issue now on my point i think the ideas of peacekeeping counter terrorism maritime security are excellent they will be helpful to us for taking things forward but i do believe that peace and tranquility in afghanistan is of a greater kind of importance as far as india is concerned and i'm afraid i at least i personally i'm of the opinion that while the international presence almost shaded the united nations and kept it out in the forthcoming situation as seems to be unfolding it may not be a bad idea to try and see that there is an element of the united nations involvement in it because peace and tranquility in that country is important to us we are in the region we are not sitting across the atlantic ocean we are not really sitting 4000 5000 miles away and you know what has happened in the past and so therefore i would leave this thought and of course Uh, i think uh, being on the security council is an advantage because i am a firm believer that it's better to be inside the tent than outside it and if you are inside you can mold something or the other and the united nations is possibly one of the options one of the possible options of some kind of elements of peace and tranquility because that will be important absolutely and uh, dr mishra close the show for us with your concluding remarks Well, thank you, Frank. Uh, in my opinion, uh, India shouldn't uh, uh, get ahead of itself. It should not uh, think that uh, everything can be sorted under its leadership, or it shouldn't sort of take on board far more than it could handle. So, therefore, those three objectives that it has chosen are noble ones, and they are the ones which are doable in terms of finding a resolution, in terms of taking it forward. so what i would suggest or what i would like to say is that rather than getting bogged down by the regional uh, challenges that are there rather than getting bogged down by what our neighbors are saying and what our neighbors are not saying it should stick to its uh, uh, advantages those three advantages being uh, peacekeeping maritime security and uh, counter terrorism and make a test case for united nations and something that all the members in the years to come months to come can say with pride that under india's leadership this is something that was achieved so rather than spreading itself too thin it should stick to its guns and make a success of those three items in the agenda and take it forward and therein lies the successes of it being a great leader something that can eventually lead to its uh, position as a permanent member in the united nations security council Absolutely. All right. Uh, we'll have to leave it at that, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us. Well, what's coming out of this discussion is that the themes that India has chosen for its UNSC presidency are well thought out. There is no need for India to pick up controversial issues and have an unproductive month of August. The issues of peacekeeping, maritime security, and counterterrorism. 
are all very relevant today. The plan for the presidency has been in the works for quite some time now. India has held meetings with permanent and non-permanent members of the UNSC to iron out differences and work on areas of convergence. India also met with China in February to get consensus on several uh, non-bilateral issues. Considering how much of planning has gone into the presidency, India is sure to achieve something significant in the month of August. The UN is a house divided and it is a great opportunity for India to bring in some much needed positivity. Well, before I go, once again, I would like to thank you for your continued support. For those of you who haven't already subscribed, please like the video, subscribe, hit the bell icon and then all notifications. Do subscribe to our newsletter to get some incisive content. The Bharata First team runs uh, a big picture quiz. Please participate by going through the description in big picture videos. If you like our content, please contribute to keep it alive. The links are in the description. Let me also take this opportunity to inform you about Bharata First Knowledge Center, an initiative that will help each one of you in your competitive exams and transform the way you learn. Go to kc.bharatafirst.com for more details and register now experience a whole new way of gaining knowledge and learning. All this information along with some must see recommendations are in the description of the video. Please go through it. That's it for me. See you again next time.